Welcome to this week's TDD Weekly Report for the week ending October 5th. First up, before we get into the gadgets and the science and the gizmos, I just want to give you a little update. If any of you are applying for the Affordable Health Care Act, especially going to the website healthcare.gov, uh, it has not really been functioning very well for the past week. The first day I tried to log in and didn't even successfully get an account started and the website basically just crashed and went down. I've heard the same thing from a lot of other people. I waited until today, Sunday, to try again. Somehow I did successfully get not only an account started, but get all the way through the form to the end to the submit. And then after that I submitted it, and then it came back with a screen saying, we can't verify your identity. So what I did was I jumped on the chat. They had a little chat there. After about 30 minutes, that logged me off with no nobody coming back. So I called the 800 number and I talked to a guy named Leo, um, actually a very nice guy. I had to wait about 30 minutes to get through the 800 number, but I got to this person and uh, he told me for some reason the website is not able to. There's a glitch in the website and the way it connects that it's not able to verify anybody's identity at all. And he also said he was rather surprised that I got all the way through to the submit part of the form because he had talked to 30 people previous this morning and he said nobody has successfully up until me gotten all the way through the form to the end and been able to submit it. So hopefully my information is saved and still there because I have the logout in the account and I can just uh, take care of whatever needs to be taken care of on Monday. So I'm going to give you uh, reports and updates on this and we will see how it comes out. Um, a lot of glitches along the way um, between October 1st when it started and October 6th. There's been plenty of time to um, fix stuff or to account for the extra heavy traffic uh, to me. Um, I would give it a, an F, really. I wouldn't even give it a D minus. I would give it an F after six days and still not having it been able to handle traffic, especially on a Sunday morning. But I'll give you updates on and where we continue from there. First story comes from 1954 Shadow. This is something myself, once in a while, do you guys ever have an, an invention going on in your mind about something you would really think somebody should invent? Well, I was thinking about this a couple of weeks ago. Something to brush your teeth that you could actually fit inside your mouth. And I was thinking kind of like little brushes that would move or something like that where you could just like place it inside your mouth, have the little brushes work and like, you know, less than 10 seconds get your teeth brushed. Well, this is something very close. This thing is called, uh, the, the title of it, I'll give you the title first. The world's craziest toothbrush cleans your teeth in six seconds and is 3D printed. It's called the Blizzident is what it is. And what they do is they ask you to go to your dentist and have your teeth, um, have an impression made of your teeth, have it sent to a lab, and then have the, the impression digitized. Send that to them, and then they will use a 3D printer to make one of these Blizzident. Now, this thing doesn't have any moving parts, basically. It's just an outside form of your teeth with these little brushes inside, and then what you do is you bite down on it, and I guess you bite up and down for about six seconds, and there's enough little brushes and bristles to get all your teeth properly brushed they claim. Now the thing is going to cost for uh, that you're going to buy from them the little blizzardant plastic thing is going to cost about three hundred dollars so it's not something a lot of people are going to buy right away I don't think and they didn't even account for the fact of how much is your dentist going to charge you for doing the imprint then digitize it and send it on so it's just basically in its beginning stages but I'm thinking too if you get some people that are pretty clever and pretty geeky I think you could get some of that alginate yourself and uh, make your own impression and then get some kind of a 3D scanner. I can just see this totally with geeks taking this over and being able to do it for a heck of a lot cheaper than that. And then if you and your friends are going in with a 3D printer, um, this is one of the things you probably could with enough talent and enough people knowing what they're doing, especially anybody that has any kind of dental training. I think the geeks could challenge this and we could make something like this. And, I, and even better than that, too, I would like to see some kind of a thing maybe using some kind of a, a piezo vibrator or something in there where you'd actually move the brushes themselves and you just stick it in your mouth, bite down on it, the little brushes would vibrate, get your teeth brushed, 10 seconds, be done. So, I don't know, just, I, I think that's cool when, when somebody comes up with an idea that I've had in my mind and at least makes something that's kind of like it. Next up, uh, this is one I found online just uh, cruising around. Some of you maybe have even seen this story. If you have anybody that has an iPhone, especially from the 4S model on up, there's this voice called Siri. Well, the lady that does the voice has actually come forward, and she's a voice actress. Her name is Susan Bennett, and she talked about the fact that um, she worked on the on these voices. She didn't even know this was going to be for Apple or anything like that. She's just a voice talent, and I guess she works under contract. So back in 2005, she spent a month 
uh, and day after day for uh, four hours a day for an entire month just recording voice and sounds having no idea what it would eventually be used for or anything like that just doing it because that's what her job is and then later on she was surprised when a friend called her up that had one of those uh, iPhone 4S's and said Susan is this your voice and she uh, didn't even she had an iPhone herself but it was an older model so she had to actually log on to the Apple website and actually listen to the Siri voice and then she realized it was her voice um, as a matter of fact you've probably heard her voice even before Siri because she's done voice acting for GPS units so her voice is heard on GPS units and in airports so if you hear a female voice doing um, just common announcement for airlines and stuff like that it may very well be Susan Bennett but if you get a chance check out I've got the link to the article where she talks about it a little bit it's got a, a little video and uh, some explanation or anything like that I think you might get a kick out of it so it's kinda of pretty cool and next this is six great alternatives to iGoogle if you um, if some of you like me really like the iGoogle start page I just absolutely love it, the way the gadgets are set up, the way the feeds go and everything like that. I've got my news feeds, I've got weather reports. I just really, really like iGoogle, but if uh, you're using it like me, you've been getting the notices pretty much every day now. They, they're warning you there's a countdown, and when October is over, that's pretty much the end of it. Well, there's six alternatives you can use, and the personal one that I use myself is called IGHome.com, and this guy has really gone out of his way to make it look as much like the IG that you expect as possible so he's got the looks down and I think in my opinion it's even a little bit more flexible and what I'll do is I'll go to my computer screen I'll put that up and I'll show you guys how I use it now if you're not really into that but maybe you just want a, a home start page or something like that this might be a possibility for you for a home start page too besides and uh, there's other alternatives too like you can set up Yahoo and I'll give you the list of the six from the article but you can set up Yahoo to be customizable but I like this because it's a little bit more you know it's ad free and stuff like that so um, yeah uh, let me show you what it looks like and how I use it okay here we are at IGHome.com and if you're used to iGoogle this pretty much has the same exact layout right here is your button this blue button up here where you can see my mouse this is add RS feed right next to it is add gadgets you've got the black bar across the top with your Gmail calendar reader bookmarks maps you can go to Google Maps the default search engine is Google but you can change that in the settings if you don't want Google to be but that's the default the way it is and the great thing I like about this too it does have uh, when I originally started using it back almost a year ago it didn't have as many gadgets it's got much more gadgets now the RSS feeds look uh, really great I've got the stock market here I've got my weather map weather channel if you don't like that I've got a little bit down here I've got AccuWeather I've got Slashdot and Tech Dirt feeds off to the left here I've got NRA news which I follow Google News down here to the right uh, Lifehacker on the top I've got the uh, on the top to the left here I've got how to of the day so it's laid out exactly like my feeds I've got world clocks right here's world clocks times in Queensland uh, times in London etc etc so it's basically set out with all the information of my iGoogle you can also add tabs to it there's a place up at the top here to add tabs so I, I've got a second tab here just set up I don't really have anything with it yet but it's another page I can have if I want to move stuff over like if I want extra weather forecasts I was thinking maybe just have them be a separate tab that's something that um, you don't have in iGoogle and the nice thing about this to me that makes it even better is along this black bar here you can configure these links exactly how you want if I click on the Gmail link or, or I, let's say I click on especially the YouTube link this will take me to the YouTube channel that they think I want to go to but it's linked for some reason it's linked to the wrong YouTube channel so I have to click it on, and then uh, change the user in my YouTube channel it's never the one but this way with this one it goes right to my Suburban Writer YouTube channel they wanted to uh, Google Plus wanted me to, to use my name so they forced me to get a name channel so on iGoogle I can't configure it I just click the YouTube up here and I have to go to the YouTube channel they want me to and then I have to switch it this way I configure it with the link I want same thing with the uh, last entry here is my G, my Google Plus instead of taking me to one account and then I have to switch it to the other account that I use all the time it goes right to the correct account and how you do that is it's got a little in the top right hand corner it's got the little gear deal and you just go to the little gear deal drop down menu 
go to profile and then for your individual links give a sec here it's running a little bit usually it runs faster so okay you got to the to the left here you've got black bar links is one of your choices when you choose the black bar links you put up the exact link you want in the page you want it to go to. You type a label for it and then you type the exact link. So when you hit the back black bar link above, say that 10 times fast, uh, you will actually go to exactly where you want to go. So to me that puts it even a step ahead of iGoogle itself and this will be my new home start page. And top left you just click it again and it brings you right back to your home page. So I would say check it out. If for some reason after that you don't like it, there's five other possibilities in the article. So that's it for this week. Take care, everybody. I will catch you next week.